My name is Stephanie Manasse. I'm originally from uh, Montreal in Canada. And I've been here for uh, 10 years, but left Canada 20 years ago. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about myself. But uh, I want to start off by saying um, that the phrase that I've been hearing a lot recently is uh, disruptive innovation. Uh, you've probably heard it to describe uh, companies like Uber and Airbnb, companies that are doing things differently. Now, I feel honored that people have used that to describe what I do with the Accessible Art Fair. Um, but I'll give you a little bit of background first to, to describe my parcours, as they say, uh, so you understand why people have said that I'm doing things slightly differently. Um, I grew up in a creative environment in Canada. My parents emigrated in uh, 1968, um, and they were originally from Morocco, Moroccan Jews. And uh, Moroccan Jews brought uh, fashion to Canada, where fashion didn't exist. People wore polyester in the old days. And, uh, and the Moroccan Jews uh, essentially brought uh, higher-end fabrics from Europe and, um, and, and fashion, essentially. And my father started a company in the, six, in the 70s sorry, uh, to bring high-end business wear to women uh, so they can go looking really nice to work. My mother uh, is an artist, and um, so I grew up in this environment that was very creative. And as you know, in Canada, as in the US, there is this attitude, this very can-do attitude. You can do whatever you put your mind to. If you want to do something, just go for it. And that was the attitude that I grew up with. Um, and it was very positive, and uh, I felt like I was on top of the world. I can achieve anything. And then I decided to move to Europe, where the attitude is slightly different. In 97. <laughs> In 97, um, I graduated from uh, McGill University and I set off to um, Prague in the Czech Republic uh, where I taught uh, English as most North Americans do when they arrive in, uh, in Europe. And I had a wonderful experience, learned a lot about art and was immersed really in, uh, in culture and, um, and in beauty. And I appreciate my time very much there. I was there for four years and I met my husband and suddenly I became a trailing spouse. I don't know if you know this term, but it's these women, or sometimes men, who follow their partners around because of their careers. So he was working for the um, foreign office, the UK foreign office, and his job uh, took us to Milan. So again, wonderful access to art, innovation, design. And I said, okay, if I'm in such a place, maybe I will introduce my mother's art to, uh, to the Milanese, to the Italians. Uh, so I took some of her works and I took her portfolio and I went from gallery to gallery and I said, uh, here, here's some art, can we have an exhibition? Oh, no, that's not how we do things around here. Your mother is an unknown, never heard of her, never seen her work, why should we show her work? And I said, well, you know, she's got talent, um, she's a professional artist, this is what she does, is there any way we can organize something? No, so the, the doors were closed repeatedly. There's no way that we can organize a show for an unknown artist that does not have a gallery. So that was quite frustrating, but life continued and I ended up in sunny Belgium, <laughs> as I said, 10 years ago. And, uh, and here again, I said, okay, well, I'll try, I'll try again and I'll try and get my mom into galleries or at least have a show for her somewhere. But the doors were closed. There were certain codes that I was learning the hard way. There were certain codes in the art world that uh, I had to follow and, uh, and I wasn't part of it at all. So I, as I was interested in art, I was going to exhibitions and I was meeting artists and, and, I, and what I was hearing over and over was that these young and not so young, emerging as they call them, artists, didn't have anywhere to show their work unless they organized things themselves. So if they were not part of a gallery, there was nowhere for them to go. So I said, hmm, but wait, there's a lot of talent out there, but there's nowhere for them to go, so why don't I just do it? I, why don't I just organize something for them? So I put together nine artists that I'd met from different places, and I called it the Accessible Art Fair. Why accessible? Not because it's affordable or cheap, but rather to make these artists accessible to the public, and to make the public accessible to the artists. Um, so I put together nine artists. We had a um, thousand visitors, and they sold, I think we sold 100 pieces uh, that weekend. And I thought, yes, I've done it. And I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it again. And I've done it for eight years now. 
and now we generate uh, about 2,000 sales per show. We work with over 100 artists every year. Uh, we give them a superb platform in order to sell their work. I work with a marketing team, I work with a PR team, I have fantastic sponsors that follow me, little old me from Canada. I have BMW, I have Mont Blanc, and I have American Express who want to align their brands, their top end luxury brands, to mine. And why do they want to do that? Because they want to support the arts and they want to show that they align themselves to artists and the arts. So I have to say that I'm quite pleased uh, with, uh, with what I've done in your country, and I feel honored to be here. Um, and in fact, it wasn't really uh, a revolution in the art world that I wanted to do, but an evolution. And I hope that you come and you appreciate the art fair as well. Thank you.